Welcome back to Data to Decisions. In today's video, we will see how we can transform the raw data as shown on screen here, where we have a list of employees and the department that they belong to. How can we transform this into a visual, which is a column chart, which will summarize the count of employees for each department. And on top of that, we're gonna make it dynamic. When new employees are added to your raw data, this will automatically get reflected in our column chart and you don't have to do anything at all to accommodate the change. Now let's get started. So we'll start with our input data. So we have employee ID, employee name, and department. The first step we're gonna do is to select all the values here. Uh, and I did the shortcut. So if I'm clicking on employee ID, I can do shift, control, press both shift and control, do the right arrow, which will go to the department, and then do the left down arrow, while keeping the control and shift press. Now it will select all the values. So now I'm gonna do control T to change it into a table, control plus T. And then Excel will ask, where is the data for your table? That is good, my table has headers, yes. And then, okay. In this case, my table does have the first row as headers. Um, and then, so now we have converted into a table and I want us to name the table. If you click anywhere inside the table now, you will go to the top left here where it says table name and I will choose the name as data. Keep it very simple. Now we have converted into a table. Moving on to the next step, let's first find out for us to create a column chart, we need the list of departments on the x-axis and the count of employees on the y-axis. So let's first calculate the x-axis. I want a distinct list of departments. In one of our previous videos, we already saw how we can create a distinct list. We're going to use the unique function. And then I'm going to type in data, which is the name of the table that we just now created. And I'm going to, uh, after you type in data, press the open brackets here, square brackets. And then um, you can actually choose one of the columns. So here I want the distinct list of departments. So I'm going to go. And as soon as I start typing, Excel will tell me uh, one of the possible values or the column headers there. So it, I'm gonna hit tab, uh, which will put the entire name. You can type the name also. And so basically I will close it with the square bracket again. And now I have a function and I'm gonna close uh, with a parenthesis and then hit enter and we'll see what happens. So it gives me the distinct list of department names in my raw data. And if your raw data changes, this formula does not have to be changed. It will automatically still bring you the distinct list. That's what we are going after. We want the solution to be dynamic, where you spend the time to build this only once. And any time when the data changes, you don't have to do anything at all. And you can even hand it over to your client or a customer who actually can benefit from this automation. Now, moving on to the next step, we want to count the number of employees. So counting, we're going to use a function called count if, and this time, what is the range that I'm going to go and count? I'm going to go to the department table in my raw data, right? So what I'm going to do is to go to the, again, type in data, open square brackets, department, close square brackets. And now what am I going to search for? I'm going to search for every single possible distinct department name. And so I'm going to click inside the cell C7 but instead of just doing C7, let me see, let me show you what happens. If you do C7, it counts the number of employees in accounting. This is great, but we want all the departments to be counted. And so after the cell C7, go ahead and put a hash. And this automatically now tells Excel that I'm referring to the dynamic array of department names. So if there are more departments in the future, no problem, you will get more employees automatically uh, count of employees calculated for us. So this is the dynamic nature of the solution. So now we have the y-axis values and the x-axis values. Now it's time we can go and create a chart by, let's say, for example, I select all these values and I go insert uh, column chart, cluster column chart, and now it'll automatically do this. Now I would like to change this to a different chart. I can go because I have one of my custom designed column chart. You can skip this step. 
if you'd like. Uh, on the other hand, if you're interested in uh, a video around chart templates and how we can you know, customize the appearance of the charts and things like that, please put your uh, interest in the comment section and I'll do another video on that. For this video, I'm just gonna select my template, which I've already, uh, what I want to use for this exercise. So it gives me the certain font, certain colors and everything. So that's all it is. Uh, it doesn't change the functionality at all. Now we have a chart and it automatically, when you click on it, you see that you know it's referring to these CDs. But the important thing I want to do now is to, for the chart to be able to handle the dynamic nature of the data. So let's say I add more values here. I want the data, I, I all, if my raw data has more department names, I want the chart to be dynamic and accommodate that. So in order to do so, what I'm going to do is I want to point this chart to this dynamic array of departments, dynamic array of count of employees. In order to do so, there is a separate step in between. Um, it's how it, at least I know how to do it. So what I'm gonna do now is to click on cell C7, go to uh, formulas, define name. We're just gonna give a name to this dynamic array, right? So this is a list of department names. So let's just call it departments, okay? An important thing here is it should refer to the dynamic array. It should not refer to only that cell C7. Whenever we want to convert something or a reference to a dynamic array, put a hash at the end. So I've done the hash mark or a hash symbol at the end in the reference. Now I hit OK. Nothing changes because we're just creating names. We're not doing anything to the chart yet. But let's click on D7 and do the same thing and call it employee count or let's say call it count employees and put a hash in here hit okay so now we have given names now right click on the chart select data now i can actually uh, use my uh, dynamic array so go and click on employees hit edit and now um, instead of this reference so make sure that uh, this is done correctly if you are, in my case, my sheet name uh, is 18. And so it's it says 18 uh, in quotes, and then there is an exclamation mark. Keep the exclamation mark. After the exclamation mark, delete everything. Type in what we named the count of employees. We named it as count employees. So just type it in and hit okay. And now we're gonna do the same thing to the X axis, edit. Same thing, remove everything after the exclamation mark, and then just type in departments because that's what we named our dynamic range. So hit okay. And now nothing changes because uh, the data has not changed, but let's test it. Uh, I have some extra data here. I have saved uh, some extra data. I'm just gonna select all, copy. I'm gonna go to the end of our raw data here, which is in a table, and I'm gonna select the cell here immediately after the table right click paste as values and now i've expanded my raw data so now let's go and check if the new departments like sales and everything are coming through there we go we have sales operations products so those are new departments and you can also see them appear here as this is the sales count of employees and sales operations part and everything Again, I know it, the x-axis doesn't look great, and I'm going to talk, uh, address that in one of the coming videos. Uh, for now, the purpose of this video is, can your chart handle new values that are coming in automatically without you doing anything? Okay, that's too small. Okay, you can still read it. Um, we, we tested when we added more data, the chart is dynamic, calculations are dynamic, you don't have to do anything at all. But now let's test if, for example, uh, all these accounting employees, let's say I'm going to put them into uh, HR. Um, oh, CARE. So accounting has 39 employees. CARE has 37 employees. What if I change all of these uh, into CARE? I'm just going to type in CARE and watch out the numbers in the chart as they change. Uh, CARE, control, enter. There we go. Automatically change. You didn't have to do anything at all. So this is a great dynamic solution to create dynamic column charts which will accommodate the changes in your data, expansion in your data, new values in your categories, no problem, everything is resolved. Now, um, just to recap the steps that we followed, we started with raw data, 
and we first put it into a table. The reason why we put them into a table is because you see that our formula points to a table. So when the table expands, the formula will still get all the new data. And so the first step, create a table, give it a name. Then we wrote a formula for the unique distinct list of departments. Then we wrote a formula for counting the employees in each department. All of these are dynamic. Then we actually gave a name to these things. So departments uh, is the, uh, we gave a name by going through to the defined name. And then we gave a name to the employees as well. Then finally, we went into a chart. We created a blank chart and then we actually edited and put the count, the dynamic uh, the name range in here. And you saw that Excel automatically, you know, adds the entire she, uh, workbook name and all that. You don't have to do that, but um, it will automatically do it because it needs to know that this uh, reference is pointing to the whole workbook. And so that's why it automatically puts that. So as soon as you put the named range in your series as well as in your access labels. Then now you have connected that dynamic calculations in your chart. So now the chart becomes dynamic also. So that's uh, a summary of what we did uh, in this video. Uh, I'm going to do more on these uh, column charts in the upcoming series of videos. I look forward to seeing you. If you have any suggestions, uh, please put them in the comment section below. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you soon.